Hello and welcome to another episode of In The Mix with John Galloway presented by Crossbones MMA Radio. I'm your host John Galloway and today as we look at the world of combat sports, I'll be joined by my guest Tyler Stinson. Tyler, John Galloway, Crossbones MMA, how's it going today? It's going real good man, thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem, thanks for being here. So Tyler, we have a, uh, a fight coming up in about 10 days from now, it's October 31st. Uh, at the USF Sundome in Tampa, Florida. It's going to be Titan Fighting Championships 31, and you're going to be taking on uh, Jose Figueroa. How did this fight come about? Uh, it came about as uh, most of my fights in my career have short notice. Um, <laughs> a mutual friend of mine gave me uh, said that he would talk to the matchmaker for Titan, and he told me to call him the next morning, and that was that was last week. I called him and he offered me a fight right there, and so I mean, there's nothing real big to it. It was just made a few phone calls, and they wanted me on their show. So, you know, I've been training like I've had a fight coming up, but just you know, nothing set in stone. So you're you're going to be going into this into this fight on about two and a half weeks' notice. Is that is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Is this something that? you've done before in the past is this something that um that worries you i mean we hear a lot when you know when we're watching shows all oh, this guy's coming into this fight on very short notice uh is that something that worries you because that's the way it's presented normally yeah i mean if you're not if you're not training and then you get offered a fight and you have you know two weeks to get back in shape then that sucks that that's that's no fun. Um, but my first fight, I decided that I wanted to start fighting, and about ten days later, I had a fight. <laughs> uh, so it's it's never been anything strange to me. I have been caught off guard before when, say, I was taking a break from training, and then a fight, you know, presented itself. But you have a week, or sometimes one time I fought on three days' notice. They called me on wow. Monday, and I fought on Thursday. Yeah, that's uh, pretty crazy. And that was that was after I fought two weeks prior to that and you know i was taking a couple weeks off so it's not anything that you know really surprises me or, or catches me off guard i'm always in, and i've been training like i said i've been training pretty hard you know just to try to stay ready instead of having to get ready now i'm looking here and and i see you've been around for a while you're got a an impressive record of 27 and 10 um, you fought pretty much for everybody who's anybody. You fought for Bellator, you fought for Strikeforce. This isn't your first go around with Titan. Um, what's it like going from one organization to another? Uh, comparing, you know, each to, you know, each one to the other one. Is it that drastically different going from, let's just say, Bellator to Strikeforce or Strikeforce to Titan? Do you see that big of a of a difference, you know, organization to organization? Uh, I mean, not really, not at this point. Maybe when you know when I first signed with Bellator and then I went to Strikeforce, you know, it was oh well, you know, Strikeforce is better, you know, for whatever reason. But now, you know, it's 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 not anything like that, uh, in my opinion. Since, like you said, I've been in a lot of different organizations here and there, and. And the the cool thing is is this you know this fight world is such a small world that a lot of the guys behind the scenes uh, they've they've worked for all the shows too you know all the guys behind the scenes the the media crews the guys that keep the fighters you know um, on schedule all the interviews and all that crap they're usually I've worked with a lot of the same people you know from Bellator all the way you know to the World Series and Strike Force and and all that stuff so. It's kind of cool just to see everybody, you know, see people that I haven't seen in like four years. <laughs> and I always, I've always gotten along great with, with all those people behind the scenes. I've never had a problem with any organization. The only, the only problem I've ever had is just I wasn't getting fights as, as often as I would like. Right. Now, that, a clear cut, a clear cut example of what you're talking about right now is uh, with Scott Coker coming in to, from Strike Force over to. Uh, over to Bellator, and now he's bringing in a lot of the Bellator guys. Uh, I'm sure it's a lot of the same people that uh, you know you would have seen being in Strike Force, and now you know coming over over to the Bellator uh, Bellator side of things. But I want to get I want to get a, a little bit more specific into uh, Jose here for you with you for a second. Uh, have you had a chance to view any video of his? Any 
uh, footage of his fights? Is that something that you do? Do you study film? Yeah, yeah, I uh, I watched a few of his fights, some of his fights from um, M- M1, uh, a couple of those fights. Not a lot. Uh, my coaches, they 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 might watch a little bit more than me, but you know, I don't I don't really worry about that too much. If I see a fight or or a couple, you know, a lot of guys they don't change. They might change something little itty bitty things, but everybody fights pretty much the same way. Uh, especially if you're staying at the same camp and, and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, I watched him, and I think I think his style uh, plays right into mine. Uh, he, he, he likes to come forward, and I like to hit angles and catch you when you're not looking. Now, you're both, gonna, you're both coming into this fight. Um, you're both 6'3". It's not, you know, you don't have a height advantage. You don't have a, a height disadvantage. It, are you used to fighting guys that are right around your height? Is is that offsetting to you having somebody that that matches you in the height department? Uh, only only if they know how to use their height. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Um, right. I fought guys that have been taller than me, and I you know, or the same height, but they didn't know how to use their reach like I did. Uh, so you know, I was able, I was able to beat them. Um, but I've ran into a couple of hard guys where they actually knew how to use that reach, and and that that's that's really all it is. You know, if, if he doesn't know how to use his his long arms to to counter me, that, then you know he's going to be in a in a disadvantage. Now, as I mentioned, you have twenty seven wins. Nineteen of them were by knockout or TKO. Is that the area yeah, right. that you that you? you know, look to finish a fight? Is that the, the mode that you look to finish a fight? Or is that just how it seems to be happening for you? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't ever try to win a decision. That's, that's too long for me to fight. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I, I get tired after 15 minutes. Nice. Uh, and that, you know, when I first started that, you know, the guy that I looked up to was Chuck Liddell. You know, he was on his tear. And he was knocking people out and getting out, getting in there and getting out and okay. getting paid. And, you know, I, I found out that I have heavy hands, too. And if I can connect, you know, it'll, it'll be a short night for me. And I won't have to stay in there and slug it out. You know, I'm, that's the other thing. I, I don't understand these guys to go in there and say, you know, want to have a battle and a war. And it's like, well, that's, that looks cool. You know, it's good. But, uh. I'd rather not get hit at all and just right. demolish the other guy. Yeah, I'd rather hit you once, have you knock you out, and then walk out of the ring without having to, you know, without having to avoid a punch exactly. at all. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so now, like I said, we're about ten days out, a little under ten days here. Um, how's your camp been? I know you said it very short. You were training previously. Um, you know, you, it sounds to me like you're you constantly train. Uh, but how did the how did the camp go for you? Is it were you happy with the production that you got out of it on on such a short uh, short stint, or would you like to have seen more growth? And also along those lines, when are you going to be shutting your camp down? Uh, do you extend it a little bit longer because of the short notice? Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, like I said, I've been training, so so I've already been in camp. You know, for I'd say around two months, I've been training pretty hard and. Uh, it's going great. You know, I've got guys like Justin Gaethje and uh, Pat Berry, and uh, we've got a guy here, LT, you know, just guys that push you in sparring and try to kick your ass. <laughs> you know, they're not holding back. And, you know, when you've got the undefeated, you know, uh, world champion coming at you, and or you got Pat Berry coming at you, you know, you got to be on your toes. you got to be on your game. Yeah. If you're not in shape, they're going to they're gonna crush you, you know. And... Other than you know shutting camp down, it's uh, this is this will be the last hard week. Uh, I sparred this morning, had a good hard sparring session, and um, Saturday will be my last sparring sparring session. And then from then on, it's kind of just you know maintain the weight and and just just get little workouts in here and there, and just work on you know staying sharp. Now, do you cut a lot of weight coming into your fights? Not really. Uh, I mean, not as not as much as as most of the people in the sport do. Uh, I cut around maybe like eight to ten pounds. All right. So, because the reason I ask you that is, you know, lately we've had a, a couple guys, uh, big name, high profile fights, 
uh, that have gotten canceled or postponed because guys, you know, didn't make weight or uh, couldn't make the weight, had issues and, you know, health issues along the way. Uh, and now we have guys like Joe Rogan coming out saying that, you know, he feels that uh, cutting weight is essentially a form of cheating because you're, you're, you know, putting your body into a position that you're not normally in. Uh, what are your feelings on cutting weight? Hang on just a second. Yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, uh, cutting weight. I'm I'm with Rogan on that one. I would I would love same day weigh and uh, you know it make people act. You'd actually fight people that are at that weight. You know, kind of. It, it never really made sense to me weigh in the day before and and you know fight the next day. But that's just how it's always been. Right. So uh, so yeah, I'm with him on that on that aspect. Just. I'm not really too concerned about, you know, the health risks. If you're going to do whatever you're going to do, you know, that's that's their prerogative. I'm not, you know, worried about that so much. But fighting people that are actually, you know, around your own weight, maybe a 10-pound difference instead of sometimes like a 30-pound difference. Now, is that something people, that... People would still cut weight even if it was the same day weigh-in, but they, you know, they just wouldn't cut as much. Right. Now, but that also takes away an event for the UFC the night before, you know, so it's all about money when it comes down to it, not, not the health of the fighters. Is, is that something that you face in the past, you know, having guys cut, you know, 25, 30, 35 pounds down to a weight that you're contracted at, and then the next day in the, you know, during your fight, you're seeing them, you know, with that weight packed back on? Yeah, uh, my my first six fights, I fought at 185 because I didn't want to cut weight, and I would weigh in at about 180. And my first three fights, I did pretty good. And then I ran into a couple guys that they were cutting about 20 pounds to make 185. Right. And and then you know it's it, it's like I'm fighting a gorilla in there. They were just so strong. Sure. And you know just powerful. And so then I started having to play that game and. You know, like I said, I was already weighing in at 180, so I wasn't having to cut a lot anyways to make 70. I just didn't know how to do it. I never wrestled right. before or anything like that. You know, I kind of just decided I wanted to fight and kind of just, you know, <laughs> cannonball into the deep end and, just, you know, find out if you sink or swim. That's definitely one way to do it, I'll tell you that. So, coming into the fight, like I said, October 31st, USF Sundome, Tampa, Florida for Titan Fighting 31. Um, you've got people that help you out along the ways. You've got sponsors that, uh, you know, help you out with not only your fight camps, but your fight clothing, everything like that. Uh, you know, just keep you healthy, you know, year-round. Why don't you take a second to tell me about some of them? Well, uh, one of my sponsors right now... Um, I'm actually just got done getting a haircut from Tony Longo at Salon 7 right here in Denver, Colorado. She's the best. Everybody in the area, come check her out. And then since this was a short notice fight, I didn't get a lot of... Uh, it's hard to get sponsors on those short notice yeah. things. And so uh, a couple friends of mine back in Kansas City, they had... Um, started this thing called GoFundMe, yep. and it's this website, and so I started that up, and I've gotten a great response from that, you know, it's helping me, I've already um, got another coach's flight paid for, I've got my medicals paid for, uh, I got, I'm got. i hoping to get a t-shirt uh, made and paid for, and then, you know, just to, once I get out there to kind of help make everything easy, um, you know, buying food and paying for the coaches' meals and all that stuff. But really right now, that's uh, other than those. And then uh, Large Marge, Large Marge's Philly Cheesesteaks right here in Denver also. They hooked me up. They're uh, going to make my own sandwich. <laughs> Pretty cool. If you're in the area, go check them out and then come get a haircut from Tony. Awesome. You know, it's, it's nice when you, uh, you know, with something like uh, a GoFundMe page where, you know, people actually, you know, are putting putting their money where their mouth is. They're not just saying, hey, you know, we're behind you. They're they're showing it with you know with their money and you know, uh, you know with their time and effort. So you know that's kind of make you feel good. Yeah, yeah. It's been, I mean, people have just came up to me and they said, I don't want to deal with the you know the internet thing, and they just hand me some cash, you know, or a check. Yeah. I, it's it, it's uh, it's a very humbling you know feeling to see, like you said, those people actually show their support. You know, 
Yeah, that's actually, and there's so many there's so many better things that people could donate their money to than me. <laughs> and that's you know that was the one thing that almost made me not do it. You know, because there's there's just tons of things that you could donate your money to. So you know, the fact that people would do that for me, you know, it's uh, it's pretty cool, pretty cool feeling. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now. If the fight is going to be on on CBS Sports on you know on Directv, Dish Network, all the different uh, you know cable TV and satellite providers, and for the prelims are going to be on CBSSports.com. Now, if somebody can't watch the fight live, can't or they miss it on the uh, on the broadcast, where can they follow you personally? Uh, social media, Facebook, Twitter, those things, so they can keep up with not only this fight but all your other fights down the road. Yeah, um, they, I'm, you know, I'm on everything. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, on Facebook, look up Tyler the Evolution Benson. That's my fan page. Uh, go there, and I, you know, when I have fights, that's where you can follow follow the journey, and I post pictures and videos and all that stuff. Twitter, it's at Steemon, S T E E M O N, and then the number eighty four, Steemon eighty four. Check me out on there, and then uh, the same thing, I think, for Instagram. Uh, if not, you'll probably be able to find it. People are pretty smart these days with Google. <laughs> yes, they but are. But yeah, yeah find, me on, find me on the uh, the big internet and follow my journey. Awesome. Well, that's going to wrap up another episode of In the Mix with John Galloway. I'd like to extend a big thank you to today's guest for joining us. For, for Tyler Stinson, this is John Galloway, and we are Tapping Out.